the Jews will make a covenant with the Antichrist. He looks, he looks like one who will protect Israel in the opening of the seven years. So they make a firm covenant with Him for one week at the beginning of the time of tribulation. He acts as their protector until the middle of the week when He turns on them, desecrates the temple and an abomination of desolation, our Lord called it in Matthew 24. Daniel 11, it says that he has no interest in the desire of women. He has no desire for women, which may mean he's a homosexual, or it could be that he will be a heterosexual celibate. Some think this indicates he could be a pope. But far worse than Antiochus, far worse than Hitler will be the final Antichrist. So let's look at the text and see what it says about him in verse 3. He is the man of lawlessness. He is the son of destruction. In other words, he's defined by those two things, lawlessness and destruction. Now where do we first meet this, this figure? I think the first place you see him in the Old Testament is in Ezekiel 38. Verse 2, you don't have to turn to it, I'll just mention it. And there he is identified as Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And summing up what Ezekiel is saying there, he's talking about a prince who is to come, a chief prince who is to come, who will be the enemy of God's people, who will lead a coalition of nations against Jerusalem in the end times. The details of this are recorded in Ezekiel 38 and 39. And then the next time you see the Antichrist in the Old Testament, you see him in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 7 and 8, he is identified as the little horn. In Daniel 9, he is the prince who is to come. In Daniel 11, he is the king who does as he pleases. In Zechariah 11, he is the foolish, worthless shepherd. And then sweeping to the end of Scripture, in the book of Revelation, he's identified as the beast. He is all these things, but best known to us as the Antichrist in the language of 1 John 2, 18. Antichristos, against Christ and in the place of Christ. Now let me have you look in your mind's eye at just the, the things that Daniel had to say, because I think this will help define him. And I'll just lay this before you kind of rapid fire. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, it describes him as a little horn who rises from obscurity and becomes a dominant power. The horn is the symbol of power. This is a little insignificant horn who eventually rises to global power. That's Daniel 7 and verse 8. Daniel describes him as having the eyes uh, of a man, eyes like the eyes of a man which indicate his intelligence, a mouth uttering great boasts which indicate both his oratorical skills and his arrogance. Verse 21 of Daniel 7 reveals his hostility towards God's people, waging war with the saints and overpowering them. Verse 23 of that chapter notes that his kingdom will be different from all other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth, tread it down and crush it. Unlike Hitler who couldn't pull it off, the final Antichrist will rule the entire world. His empire will be worldwide. Verse 25 of Daniel 7 says he is a blasphemer who will speak out against the Most High. He will make alterations in times and in law, that is, replacing the world's religious ceremonies and observances with new ones in honor of himself. And he will even introduce a satanically inspired kind of fake morality. But Daniel tells us also that he will be limited to a brief time. A time, times, and half a time in verse 25. That's one plus two plus a half is three and a half. He'll be limited to a three and a half year period, which is half of the tribulation. His reign of terror for that three and a half will be in full swing. His domination will be so great that he will literally dominate the entire world. But when it comes to an end at the end of three and a half years, the court will convene and God will bring judgment and Antichrist's dominion will be taken away, annihilated and destroyed forever. 
The sovereignty and dominion and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey Him. He has three and a half year period, the latter half of the seven year tribulation, which is called the Great Tribulation. At the end of that, the Lord destroys Him when the Lord comes to set up His own kingdom. Then Daniel 8 has more to say about Antichrist. It says he is insolent, he has a fierce face. He will intimidate people into submission. Daniel 8 verse 25 says he is skilled in intrigue. Uh, We know that his master is Satan himself. Verse 24 of Daniel 8 indicates he will derive his power from Satan. Verse 25, he will magnify himself in his own heart, characterized by arrogant pride. Further, he will destroy many while they are at ease. He will slaughter people, not in a war. He'll just slaughter them to be slaughtering them. He will oppose the prince of princes, who is the Lord. He will be a blasphemer of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end, he will be broken without human agency, which means God will kill him, and he will kill him with the breath of his mouth. In Daniel chapter 9, Daniel says in the first half of that period of time, the Jews will make a covenant with the Antichrist. He looks, he looks like one who will protect Israel in the opening of the seven years. So they make a firm covenant with him for one week at the beginning of the time of tribulation. He acts as their protector until the middle of the week when he turns on them, desecrates the temple and an abomination of desolation, our Lord called it in Matthew 24. Halfway through, He shows His true colors, turns on the Jewish people, commits commits a defiling act in in the temple, launches the Great Tribulation, and begins an effort to massacre the Jews and massacre all who belong to Christ. Daniel says God will destroy Antichrist at the return of the Lord Jesus. In Daniel chapter 11. He is presented as a ruthless, arrogant, proud king who will do as he pleases, a blasphemer without parallel in human history, magnifying himself above every god, speaking monstrous things against the God of God, showing no regard for the God of his fathers, forsaking the religion of his ancestors. He will magnify himself above all. He has a religion. He has an ancestral religion which he forsakes. We're not sure what it is, but it is interesting. In Daniel 11, it says that he has no interest in the desire of women. He has no desire for women, which may mean he's a homosexual, or it could be that he will be a heterosexual celibate. Some think this indicates he could be a pope. God will judge him and bring him to an end at the return of Christ. Now what in the world brought this subject up? What is Paul doing talking about all of this to the Thessalonian believers? What is the point of this? The point is clear. They had been told, 1 Thessalonians 4 in the first letter, that the Lord was going to snatch them out. The Lord was going to come, the dead in Christ would rise first, and all the other believers alive would be gathered to meet the Lord in the air and be taken to heaven, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 17. Comfort one another with these words. Comfort. The comfort comes because we're snatched out. Then you come to chapter 5, and the day of the Lord breaks out, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You can look at it for a moment. The day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, verse 2, it'll come Verse 3, with destruction, the day of the Lord is coming with destruction. While the world is saying peace and safety, it all seems good. The Antichrist is ruling the world. The, the, the one world ruler has brought peace, a false peace to the world. The first half will be a time of false peace, basically orchestrated by this demonic Antichrist. But when everybody's saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, they will not escape. This is the day of the Lord. The Lord will bring it all to an end in crushing final. The fourth thing that we see is going to accompany the Antichrist are going to be signs, miracles, and wonders. So if you don't see anybody doing signs, miracles, and wonders, all these people, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Mark Zuckerberg, Adolf Hitler, all these people, if you don't see them doing signs, miracles, and wonders, they're not the Antichrist. Notice what it says here. This man will come to do the work 
of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. He will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. Now, the book of Revelation tells us that he will be able to do these signs, miracles, and wonders really through the power of this other beast, the second beast called the false prophet. And so you have to understand that just as God has a holy trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, Satan also has an unholy trinity. You have Satan, you have the Antichrist, and then you have the false prophet. And all of them try to mimic the true uh, members of the Holy Trinity.